We're back with Lane Muraoka, President and CEO of Big City Diner Restaurants. Lane, if you can continue telling us about the theme of your restaurant and what the name has to do with... Okay, Big City Diner was... We came up with the name because when we were opening that in Kaimiki, again, it was the 100-year centennial anniversary. And um, when we're doing all the history, the background, we found out that was the end of the big city. Honolulu kind of stopped on Cocoa Head Avenue there. And that Wailai Avenue was the only way to get to Hawaii Kai, Aina Haina, New Valley. There was no H1 freeway at that time. And um, there was a lot of farms, pig farmers and um, carnation farmers out on the east side of Honolulu. And they, as they looked towards the west in the evening, they could see the light in the glowing lights of the big city. And basically, that's what they referred to the big city, basically. And I thought, wow, that's catchy. You know, that's a catchy name. Um, it could travel. It could go national with a name like that. And um, I thought people would remember it, so you know. do you guys have plans to go national with your concept? We have inquiries from uh, Seattle, uh, Southern California, Las Vegas, and Denver, those four areas. But as far as it's to the point, do you want to franchise at this point or do you want to? You know, Zippy's has 23 locations currently. Um, they're just opening their they opened a, a location on Kauai and they closed it after the hurricanes, but now they're open in Maui. I figure if they can do 23 locations on this island, you know, we should be able to do maybe half of that. Mm-hmm. And, 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 um, so that's, that's our goal and emphasis right now. But the possibility of always going to the outer islands or going to the mainland and franchising is always an option. So with four locations currently, about how many employees do you have? We have currently about 250. Oh. Employees, because we're open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We have long hours, and we don't close. We're open 365 days of the year. And can you uh, share with us a little bit about your employment philosophy? Could you integrate a lot of the community and the different organizations? Okay, as far as our philosophies, to to we have the people work up from the bottom, basically. So meaning they could start as a host, host, hostess, and move into busing and into a food runner, and they eventually get to a server. The only time we hire servers is when we have a new store opening. So everybody kind of works their way up, and they kind of all learn each other's. It's not as fast as going into, but it it adds uh, more teamwork, I think, and more understanding of everyone's jobs. Do you take the servers from one restaurant and move them to another restaurant? If, or people coming up from one restaurant and they can hit the wait position in another restaurant that's opening? Yes, exactly. Like um, when YPO just opened in, in March of this year, we had people come up from, from our ward location that were hosts, hostesses, busters, and food runners, but they live on the west side. And um, they give an opportunity to, to go through the server training program. And uh, it's tremendous growth. And we have that with YPO now. And some of your best employees, instead of coming with preconceptions of what we want them to do as far as our service levels and standards, um, they kind of get an idea from the, the day one of what our philosophies are and what our values are. So it works really well for us as retention and being rewarded to move up move up the ranks within one store. As you know, our show is focused on social entrepreneurship. And one story that really caught my eye was when I read in the paper about Big City Diner employing homeless people. And it really opened my eyes because I forgot the cost of living in Hawaii is so high. You know, these people that are homeless, that doesn't mean that they don't have jobs. They may have a job, but because the cost of living is so high, they can't afford homes. Can you share with us how you got this philosophy of, you know, bringing in these homeless people to be able to give them some money to afford food and just take care of their basic necessities? As far as the homeless in in general, I think a lot of people have stereotypes of what the homeless are. And um, a show, it's got to be about five or six years ago, I saw in primetime. And it was about um, the homeless. It was in Arizona. And it was a, actually a U.S. congressman was one of the homeless in, in there, a formal. And, I just, and there were doctors and there were attorneys all at this camp, basically. And through one circumstance or another, they ran into some hard times and ended up in this place. And they were trying to make it all better because these were professional trained people mm-hmm. with high educations and, um, um, you know, about business or about people or social aspects and they were trying to create something from this homeless camp, I guess, yeah. And it really moved me. And I go, Wow, that's fascinating. I mean, you don't know 
you can't take anything for granted nowadays because um, there's all kind of people that need help, you know, and one day you're going to need help. It's like you ever, you know, um, when the when the floods came or the tsunamis came, you know, if I was single and didn't have kids, I'd probably just get on a flight and go help out, you know, and then things tie you back in the, in the world we live in nowadays. But um, people are always going to need help. Like how would you have known that Katrina would have done the devastation that it did to New Orleans, you know? And um, it just, it just, I think everything comes around and people need help now and then. So the homeless issue is just like we have an employee in Kailua and she was, you know, she doesn't have a house. Her, I think it's her grandchild and her husband. The husband can't work. And uh, so they basically live out of van. But she's always on time, always got a great attitude, great smile. Um, is always clean, you know, and she works very, very hard. Wonderful lady. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more on Greater Good Radio.